New Hall Gaming. Game. Survive. Win. What is up the YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Diplomacy is Not an Option. The second of the two, because this is likely going to be the last one and then in the future what i'm going to do is probably just do the entirety of it as a singular episode like 100 days or something like that so that at least if you want to watch it you can and you get everything in one and you don't have to chase it down also uh, i'm going to increase the difficulty moving forward so if you are enjoying this and you're waiting for more difficult stuff don't forget to subscribe and we'll make sure that happens i've already done one so uh, yeah it's not pleasant the increase in the difficulty really does increase the difficulty, which you would expect, but obviously I'm a bit slow. Anyway, so you just seen I finished out the perimeter there, perimeter of the base, or at least the best I can. The idea being that if I use the shoreline as one perimeter, then using the walls as an additional, I don't, I haven't learned the game well enough yet to know uh, how it sort of. Shall we feed them? progresses in difficulty with the waves what i do know now and i can tell you is that as it gets difficult sort of wave sorry day 50 day 80 etc well around day 80 um it throws waves from ridiculous angles like every single possible angle on the map so north south east and west and even multiple so it does go crazy so although at the minute i feel like they're only coming from sort of down and to the right uh, there is a chance that they can come from somewhere else. Now, I'm pretty sure that they don't come on boats, so they're not going to come from the sea. I could be surprised. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, as it stands now, that's not the case. Also, this map isn't the prettiest. Um, the other maps are much prettier and greener and more colourful with a lot better saturation than this. But it is what it is. So we're going to try and complete this anyway. Now, making sure to get my units up so that I have an army, because without an army, I'm not sure that the catapults, trebuchets, uh, and ballistas, yes, are sufficient, although they are good. When you get the enemy out of the wall, uh, their minimum range stops them from actually doing much to them. So it's always a good idea to make sure you have plenty of bowmen or crossbowmen, whichever way you want to do it. And there are abilities within the research table that I'll hopefully show you shortly, um, but we'll get to that. Let's just see how this wave hits. Again, even though we know it's coming from the bottom, it's hard to judge whereabouts exactly. So that's why I'm moving my guys there in the center of the two walls. Because if I protect one wall and they hit the other wall, likely they'll have broke through before I move them there. Because the guys and the siege weapons, etc., are very, very slow in terms of movement speed. And here she comes. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, moving the guys uh, takes time. And already they're hitting that wall and they're hitting it hard. It's only a wooden wall, so it's my own fault, really. But um, they're obviously going to break through that. Now, one thing I really, really don't like about this game so far, and I'm, I'm, I suppose it's accurate, to be honest, but it just yeah, it annoys me when you're doing this sort of thing, is that they will not attack while moving. The just full stop. Is really off the sides. bowmen especially. Um, but the melee even more. So you move the melee directly into the enemy and they just stand there like idiots until they stop and then they attack, which is strange. IMO. Um, obviously it's a mechanic and that's fine. And I will have to mitigate that by moving them sooner. Second wave or second part of the wave coming in now. Also a good tip, the barracks is a perfect example there. You can put a lot of units on top of that. The main town hall, the castle that you upgrade to level 3, you can put a crap ton of bowmen on there as well. All of the towers you can. Some of the buildings you can, but they're the main ones. So the barracks, the stables I haven't tried, if I'm honest. Uh, but the siege place can put a couple, not many. Um, but the barracks there, which would be useful, though I haven't actually got enough. Um, and you can see there's nine in... Let's do some research. I, I need to remember to keep it with research. It does say research... Re I can't speak. Research complete. Um, but I obviously miss it. So I need to get better at doing that as well. When they clump together like this, using your melee troops to clump them together and keep them off the wall by sort of a few metres... That then allows your siege weapon, as you just saw, to hit them hard. 
Uh, that siege weapon, the catapult that you can see there, of course, is a bit too close. It has a minimum range, and that minimum range is where the enemy is. So it's always a good idea to uh, position the siege weapons further back. Wave complete. Excellent. That was the third wave, according to the... Yep, third wave. And the next wave is on day 20. Six days' time. Uh, we'll look at that. Uh, look towards that wave unless I do some significant upgrading in the meantime. Looking at our stats, though, at the minute. 139, 126 people. It's fine. Five are free, which is a good thing. Knowing that that's not zero means that nothing is suffering. Food is obviously suffering, which is why I'm putting down yet even more farms. Uh, and we have uh, far too much wood. No stone and very... Very little uh, iron. One spell crystal, no coins. I also need to get a couple of healers at least so that these guys uh, can be healed. I got rid of those because at the minute I don't need um, the crossbowmen. The army in itself I've got rid of. Now I did that to try and quote unquote save on food. I don't think it matters. I don't think that your military eats more than your civilians in fact i'm very confident and i'll go as far as saying i am correct um it just costs an amount of food to make them along with the the the, the wood iron etc so actually turning them from military into civilians or wor workers um, hasn't saved me anything. In fact, it's cost to me because now I have no army. I have to make them again, which means using the wood, etc., all over again. So that was actually a bad thing to do. The order to say we are Comment if I'm wrong. Food, but my lord. I can't see any stats that tell me otherwise. Just as wave four is coming in on day 21. I just about finished actually building the newer items. I've not tried yet. So the siege attacking again. building. Similar to the barracks for the siege weapons. It is the building that I used to produce catapults, uh, trebuchets. There's also a flame, exploding flame type thingy, my Bob Duber flopper. No idea what it's called off top of my head. And I've not actually used it yet. You can see I'm bringing in some melee here. Again, push them off the wall. You don't want them beating on the wall while you're attacking them. You want them fighting your melee guys while you are attacking them. Ideally, anyway. Although the wall, of course, is an inanimate object. But certainly not a wooden one. Because we've already seen how easily they are destroyed. More houses. So we get more people. But, of course, we're going to need more food. Um, there is a couple of buffs you can do. So for the houses, they go up to level 3, of course. They are level 2 at the minute, I think, because it goes hand in hand with the town halls level or your castle level. You can put in a tavern. The tavern reduces the food consumption, though. Uh, it doesn't increase the amount of people. Uh, you can then put in a water fountain. And that does increase the amount of people. I think it's by one or uh, by one for the level one water fountain, and by two people for the level two water fountain. The only downside to the water fountains is they are the range that they cover is not massive, Research whereas complete. the tavern it is. But that's obviously only reducing the amount of food, and that's on the bonk. I am not letting that stand. Thank you. Try that again. So effectively, every time I build a set of houses. I just build a crap ton of farms as well. This is why I cleared out this area to the coast in this corner. Uh, expecting that this would make life easier because, of course, the water's going to stop them attacking from there. So I can just chuck farms down all over the place and hope for the best. Cramming them in the best I can to make sure that I could just keep throwing up houses and then for the military and the thing is to build buildings you need people right it's obvious that's that's just how it is but then to build an army you also need people the catapults the trebuchets it, it all needs people so to have a huge army to fight off a huge horde we need a huge amount of houses and therefore a huge amount of farms because 
without the farms, I really don't know how you're supposed to sustain the population of that that sort of level. The the berry bush picker picker is, uh, the, the, the berries run out. The the fishing things run out, and they don't regenerate. That I've seen. The farm is the only infinite source of food, so I'm just going to build lots and lots of farms. Day 27, we now have a decent amount Research of complete. stone coming in where I can use that stone to do the walls, towers, defences, so to speak. And that should significantly increase the defensive capabilities that we have on this wave coming in from the bottom right of the screen currently, which is technically northeast, um, even though the map's on the wonk. So northeast is bottom right, now bottom left, now bottom right. You get it. And here we go again, this time with, well, brick walls, stone walls, uh, and a fully loaded wall and towers of archers, along with a large, I think it's the larger massive uh, tower behind there, you can see with four catapults attached to it, which is great. Next to that, some more archers as well. Didn't, didn't have enough to fill it up because that holds 25. Trying out the horsemen, the melee horsemen, as a defense instead, and they certainly are a lot better. They are quicker, obviously, they're on horses, but they also seem to have a better health and attack. Um, so that is good. Now, they do do more damage if they're moving, so if you charge them onto units, of course, there will be an increased attack there because they are cavalry at the end of the day. Uh, but I'm not doing that here. I am using them as a living wall. The idea being that they can keep them off that wall, as I've said, and then the minimum range for the catapults is not intruded, and they should be able to continue firing. You can see what I'm doing, actually, is pulling the horses back, because the, the, the cavalry are actually killing them too quick. They're then pushing that line back out of the range of the bowmen, and that means that then the cavalry will have to soak up that damage. I don't want that. I want the damage to be done by the bowmen and nobody take any damage, preferably. Here, I'm going to send them in on the boss. That guy is very annoying. I'm pretty sure he is the guy that brings people back to life. So as you can see, I am now going to let the bowmen deal with the ones that are on the wall and just quickly take the cavalry over, take him out and then reset. And then a little bit later on, much of the same has happened. They've just been attacking the wall, but then a couple of extra units have come in here. They do indeed have their own variant of the uh, catapult. <clears throat> we don't want that. Just sitting at the back, firing at our units. That is not very useful. Of course, they should be doing the same, right? These ranged ballistic weapons, uh, they should concentrate on. They're not, so that's a them problem, not a me problem. So I'm going to send in my army if I can. Though I'm struggling a little bit there because they got overwhelmed with the units that I had. Now, if that works and hits my guys, I don't think it instant kills them, but it certainly will do a lot of damage to a lot of units at once. So we really do need to make sure that we concentrate on those. And there we go. Sending the cavalry again, literally, Research um, to wipe them out. Look at that damage. Immediately dispatched and back to defending. And that is... Well, other than about two or more, two or more-ish enemies, think that should be wave complete. Get him, get him, got him, good. So I pushed a little bit further on. <clears throat> While I just let a bit of research go, a few buildings build, etc. Nothing's happened. Obviously, it's uh, there's not been a wave yet. We're not expecting another wave for four days. I'm just in increasing the. What do you call that? Obelisk? Yeah. Three levels of obelisk. The first one unlocks the ray. The second one unlocks the mass heal. The third one, which we're just building, unlocks the meteor, which is fabulous to watch. It's a little bit small in its uh, area that it devastates, but it's still fun to use. I have chucked down one additional... Um, tower where we was attacked previously as well to give us a few more siege weapons you can see there the bottom right hand corner just poked him 
just making sure to keep ahead. We need a lot of stone uh, for upgrading. We've gone to the town hall level three. That means that we can indeed upgrade our farms to level two, but it needs a lot of iron. And then all the other buildings as well need upgraded to level two or three. Uh, the barracks, cavalry, uh, stable, sorry. And the work, no, it's not the workshop. The place that does these siege weapons anyway could all be upgraded as well. But to do so, we're going to need a decent amount of iron and a crap ton of stone. That is what they use. And you can see there, just looking at the town hall, all them flat spots on top there. Where you can actually fill that full of units. Though, technically, um, if you're at that stage, you, you should be worried, right? Because um, all they have to do is destroy that and you have lost. So maybe uh, in the future, and you will see... I don't want to give out spoilers, but you will see that that's quite critical. So maybe we should be building walls around that uh, to give it an extra line of defense in the future. But for now, we have a crap ton of houses, a crap ton of farms, as you can see. Everything's been upgraded best I can to level three where the stone permits. And then down there in the bottom, you can see I've got an extra four catapults there on a tower and then a bit of wall just to surround it. The wall is just to give something to soak up damage should they come in at an angle that I don't like. Um, and then, of course, it will mean that we can continue to pew-pew them, as they say, while they're just hitting walls. If I don't have melee to do it for us. That noise you heard there was the workshop, right? Yep, workshop. And that increases the output of anything mechanical that it is in range of i'm only using it for the farms so it increases the farms by like 50 percent which again this is all about food right it's all about armies and food armies and food the rest of it is important but the whole purpose here is to make a bigger army than the enemy's got or at least bigger defenses than the enemy's got so there we go it's called it wave number six Day 40 is coming in two minutes and 12 seconds. It is coming in two waves, both from the north and northeast. Uh, currently almost accurate on the actual map we're looking at. So now I know which direction it's coming from. I can try and put my guys around those areas to defend. Um, and also try and increase the Research defensive complete. capabilities a bit better. Now these are... Call it. They're basically wood spikes in the ground. I'm not sure. I should have probably researched it. Slow in traps. There you go. So, realistically, originally when I put these down, I thought they were to do damage to them. So that's why I put them so close to the wall. Technically, they should be a lot further away. Really, you want them sort of at the minimum range. Uh, no, maximum range. Yeah, maximum range of your artillery. Uh, be because then you slow them down. Also, there's a better chance of your catapults and stuff working because, yeah, they're slower. In the meantime, all we've got to do now really is hope that they get built in time, move our melee units to position to absorb the attack that's coming in and allow the... I say artillery. It's not really. It's not artillery fire, that's for sure. We haven't got anything like that. It is just giant rocks that we're throwing at them at this stage. I do have some healers in there and a lot of melee knights. And there are some of the newest high-grade hammer guys in as well. Haven't really seen them do too much as of yet. I'm just going to go and clear this out. I honestly don't know why. Uh, they're not going to join in the battle. But I decided just to waste a bit of time. Because we've got 30 seconds before they spawn on the map. And then we've got to wait for them to walk to us. You don't. Let's jump to that because all we care about is the wave right. Wave six coming up. And here it is. So you can see melee units again. As always, resetting those ever so slightly to make it so that they are protecting the defensive walls. Or more importantly, the, the, the people on them. Uh, if the walls are destroyed, by the way, the people don't seem to die even though they fall from like... 30 foot. Uh, they just spawn onto the ground. Though archers uh, are not made to be hit. Uh, they're made to be hidden. Um, but it is part and parcel of what it is. If they get to the walls, then it is what we can do. 
looking at some research actually just to see if we can increase the speed of attack the car does appear to appear to be a ability for the bowman sorry the crossbowman unfortunately the bowmen have that rapid fire uh, I can't see that the crossbowmen do have anything like that, which is a bit disappointing. I was hoping everybody would have an ability later on in the research. Now I've set in some of the spawn points for the army. Uh, buildings, cavalry, everything just to be within range of the fight. And then, of course, you can see I'm then using every single person I have with the resources that I have to spawn them in. So I've got backups just in case this goes worse than I want it to. Again, pushing now back my melee troops so that we can bring all of those into the range of the catapults and the archers. And there we go, bringing in a trebuchet just out of minimum range, which is perfect. And look at that, taking out at least six or seven. Uh, I just leave that there on the sidelines to continue to volley the incoming waves. They do have, unfortunately, their own catapults, though, which is, as we've, as we've already established, problematic. Now, getting our cavalry in to wipe out these quote unquote bosses or more elite units is a bit difficult. There is just too many around. You can see there. I'm trying to push them onto those elite units, but we're being swarmed. And we're sort of getting out the ranges of the crossbowmen on the walls. Another trebuchet coming in now, though, so that should help get these smaller units out there. And then you can see I've got healers, though, they're out of range, apparently. They're not doing anything, which is infuriating. And then crossbowmen are joining as well. Our troops are under attack. I don't have anything else I can do to support my cavalry at the minute so they're going to have to push through and likely this is going to hit the wall I am of course bringing the trebuchets back because I know that they're going to now push in and hit that wall but also I've taken the catapults off that backup tower because it wasn't in range anyway. The trebuchet however will definitely reach from there. So all of these catapults now coming in and ballistas, we have some ballistas we do, though they're, they're good but they're, they're yeah they're, they're the catapults, the, the rock throwers are better. IMO. The ballistas are more accurate, but they can only kill like a maximum of three units at any one time, whereas the trebuchets and that can wipe out 10 or 15 um, if they get a decent hit. Now that wall is taking a beating, of course, them catapults are being left to do that. I'm not worried here, we're not going to lose. That's all that's left, and as soon as these units have gone here, I'll send the rest of them in to go and start staggering off those at the back line, the elite units. So with that out of the way, we push forward a little bit. Not another wave now until 54, but I'm trying to just rush this in a little bit because we've got that wave coming in. You can see it now on the map. That is obviously today's, which is 47. The next wave, which will be wave 9, will be day 54. Um, this video was getting a bit too long, so I'm just trying to get you into the perspective of where we're at. Again, I've done the same, but you can see now there is three towers, one fully loaded with archers and the others with siege weapons. Uh, some melee units to protect them. I'm not entirely sure yet where they're coming from. They come to the left or right of this rock. Uh, and then uh, the wall is as before, but upgraded to the th third stage. I was expecting iron walls, but they're not. You just get bigger, chunkier, uh, stone walls and here we go so the melee units going straight in and doing what they are supposed to do uh, whoops well they just got annihilated by the catapults and if that hits they're probably going to get oh. yeah well and then as you heard that noise that screech is where those guys the elite units there midway are bringing my guys back to life and are using them against me a little bit annoying get the archers in place here but they're getting wiped out i have sped it up because it don't make no difference anyway if, if you've got the setup right um that's going to happen now they're going to immediately wipe out all of these bowmen and of course you can now see this enemy bowmen as well this wave is not going to subside anytime soon and that is getting absolutely mutilated this guy's having a really shit day i shut the gate uh, the gate on him 
So he's going to go and do something. What's he going to do? He's going to go. Probably has to be. Well, he was going to ask to be joined, but then he got nine arrows through his face. So that's that. Now, the main line of defense, which is the line of defense that we are used to, and that is the walls and everything then from the walls. You can see we've got a trebuchet poking out on the right side there, a squeezing under the catapult as well. Um, that horde isn't too bad. There's not many left. It's not the worst thing I've seen. The elite units, though, there you can see the catapults coming in thick and fast are going to mutilate that wall very quickly. That is my actual concern, and it looks like it's going to drop now. There we go. So they have now broken through the wall, which means they're going to start attacking my buildings. Population-wise, 470. It's dropping slightly because, obviously, people are just dying. Uh, I did have a load of units set to be produced as they came in. Clearly, I'm going to go in now and do the same melee units to slow them down to allow all of these ranged items up high to do their job. Will it be enough to repel them or at least slow them down to allow me to um, stop it? I think this is a good example of why the town hall's position is very close to where everything is going wrong. They're now taking on the towers for the catapults. Of course, the catapults, un they're unable to hit everything below them because it's within their minimum range. And those guys just keep raising everything that I've already killed back again. So all we're doing is resetting. Every time I kill something, they raise it again. It's not looking good. And in fact, it's not going to end well either. You can see now they are on the builder's huts, which are the first buildings that I built likely to the point. And now the town hall has started to get tickled by the Googlies. Other than having a lot more people, or probably some spells would have been very useful here. I haven't really... It's hard to get the soul crystals at this stage because you have to destroy buildings to get them. You can't get them from units until you research it. Uh, you certainly can't make your own until you research that either at late game. So it's very difficult and I think that's where the biggest issues arise from. But as you can see, the town hall is now on 5, 2, 1, 0 percent and that is it. Unfortunately, that is the end and the answer to the question is 50 days survived. In this instance, 2,133 enemies killed, crushing six waves, which sounds a bit shite. But what else can I do apart from start again? And when I do, it will be more difficult. I've learnt now the basics, so this time, let's go for it proper. Don't forget to subscribe to see the next episode, or the next wave, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please keep liking and comments are welcome as always. Until next time, take care. Goodbye.